Drow, more commonly known as Dark Elves, are a common reoccurring type of elf, first introduced in Dungeons and Dragons as a matriarchal society of black-skinned and white-haired subterranean elves who are literally allergic to sunlight, unlike real-life underground species that develop pale skin. Drow have black skin due to the curse laid upon them when their demon goddess Lolth turned them away from the other elven gods, they produce adamantine equipment, which falls apart in sunlight, yet is badass underground, take slaves, are ruled by an abusive matriarchy that likes S and M, have magic resistance, really like spiders and hate most other elves, in short, they'd be fucking cool, were it not for the fact that 90% of all player character drow will be chaotic good and be rebelling against the evils of their race, thanks to the raging hard on underages and other treads have for Dresd. As a result, even though Dark Elf PR0N is a common B, totally acceptable given their canon behavior, and C, totally relevant when somebody asks for Dark Elf pictures. CB. People still get whiny on TG at anything moderately crude. Sure, we're trying to hold back the tide of cancer, but where Dark Elves are concerned, it's totally good. Designers have mooted plenty other visions of subterranean elf, sometimes superficially looking like Dro, sometimes even called Dro, that bend the definition given above, largely because of that anti drizzed constituency we mentioned. We'll get to those. Below. History. Drow were first mentioned in the second. 1978 hardback of the Monster Manual for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 1st Edition. And are elf. Here, the Black Elves, or Drow, are only legend. They purportedly dwell deep beneath the surface in a strange subterranean realm. The Drow are said to be as dark as fair is a bright and as evil as the latter are good. Tales picture them as weak fighters but strong magic users. Contemporaneously they are fleshed out in G3, Hall of the Fire Giant King. They truly sprang onto the world in the follow-up Drow Trilogy Adventure Path which, with its sequel Queen of the Demonweb Pits, fleshed out the Underdark, Drow Culture, and Lolf. They subsequently entered the Fiend Folio, and Gigax himself gave them PC stats in Unearthed Arcana. More on that in a minute. The already popular villains exploded in popularity as a PC race following the release of the Drizzt novels to the point of parody, oversaturation, and backlash, though all three have died down with time and distance. I guess we can't go any further without talking about the controversy. Can we alright? So a lot of the things in drow culture are supposed to be opposites of what other races see as normal. Drow are matriarchal. Consider clothing. Besides underwear, to be a sign of weakness, adore spiders and hate puppies, and have their skin and hair colors inverted from humans. Oh, and they're also evil, yeah. Put all these facts together at once and you don't even need to ask the SJWS what the accidental implications are. Things aren't helped by the internet eternal love affair was simplifying things down into jokes. So it didn't take long before Drow picked up the stereotype darker skinned elves are ruled by evil feminists and have a savage, half civilized culture of betrayal. To tell you what you already know, there's some grains of truth to the unfortunate implications, but there's also more than a little bad faith trolling at play, until people who didn't know anything about them but the memes took it seriously. First and foremost regarding their skin tone. Drow are almost never described as having any human skin tones in any sources, and their facial features are usually drawn to resemble either Caucasian or Asiatic appearance rather than an African, with dark skin, light hair, and, sometimes, red eyes. The effect the artists were going for was photonegative rather than person of color. Sadly this was lost on a lot of people, such as whoever drew the Pawnee Queen of the Spiders cover where their skin was an ash and dark tan la South India. Pretty much every Japanese artist, where they tend towards the coffee with latte end of the skin spectrum. And one particular writer who described drow hair as curly, even the evil thing wasn't supposed to dominate drow culture. Drizzt was rocking the good alignment as far back as 1988. Then in 1991 Elastri was written in to show drow weren't inherently evil. The evil gods were just on top right now and the good ones were still clawing back territory. As of the present, 
the drow have seemingly moved past the backlash to hit the most popular spot they've ever been in. They were introduced as a core PC race for the first time in 5e, albeit the only one at launch to have a built-in penalty. The second major adventure line for the edition took place in the Underdark and gave them a ton of focus, and was retconned to be a massive plot by their patron goddess to boot and they tend to cameo in most other adventure lines or collections and get new monster versions added with each new monster manual equivalent. In universe, the drow backstory mostly boils down to them being victims of the bitter breakup between Corellan and Lolf. Basically, when the two gods started fighting, this led to a great elf civil war as elves chose to follow either one god or the other. When Lolf's side lost, she and her followers were all kicked out of the realms controlled by the Seldarine, and that extended to her elf followers, who fled into the Underdark to avoid further retribution. There, they stewed over their defeat and fully turned to the Dark Powers in hopes of rebuilding and one day launching a massive counterattack to destroy those who had driven them from the surface. Old school drow were implied to worship all manner of unsavory deities and demon princes, but due to the Forgotten Realms, and in particular the Drizzt novels, Lolth eventually became the de facto henotheistic patron goddess of all drow. Relations. The drow don't exactly get on well with other races, but they are still elves, so the family tree can produce some rather odd branches. Famously, drow are often transformed by Lolth into half drow, half spider centaur creatures traditionally known as driders. In several editions, they also created the Chitines, a race of humanoid spiders. An incredibly rare mutation amongst the drow are the Zaki, meaning ghost spiders drow afflicted with albinism. First appearing in the form of a prominent antagonist character in the original Maztica novels, who was transformed into a drider at their end. The Zaki were fleshed out in 3.5's Drow of the Underdark. They are mechanically identical to Drow. But their albinism allows them to pass themselves off as elves, so they are coddled and trained as elite infiltrators. A common sacred rite for drow priestesses of Lolth is to bang a powerful demon known as a Glabrizu. The resultant half-fiend offspring is known as a Dridleth. In Ad and D, drow also had a unique half-dragon offshoot race that was half-deep dragon, known simply as the Drow Dragon. In 3e, this idea was tweaked and replaced with a race of drow dragons born of shadow dragon lineage, called Zekil. These in turn gave rise to a race called the Drazakil, who could chap a shift between purely drow and purely draconic forms. Much like how Duga have the long forgotten but but still underdark dwelling counterpart of grey dwarfs, so to do drow have such a counterpart race. The Roxir elf, Mistra has its own unique elf race that takes the drow's niche. The Shadow Elf. D&D. Uh, First edition. There never were drow in the Buxkmi line. This line did spin up some underworld elves incompatible with surface elves, the Shadow Elves, the Shatanothan, but those were Aztec or post-Aztec. Shadow Elves farm spiders in, like, one city only. Leave them alone where drow did exist. Starting at Greyhawk, Gigax, at first, restricted them to the role of monsters, due to their in-game lore. Both Drizzt Dorden, in Icewine Vale, not Greyhawk, and arguably not Forgotten Realms at first, either, and Viconia Diva were exceptions, with backstories to explain why they are on the surface instead of down in the Underdark. That said, Gigax wasn't entirely ignorant to his audience. PC stats for Drow Elves appeared, alongside the other Underdark Demi-Humans. Dugar and Zverfnablin, in the original Unearthed Arcana for Ad and D1E, they were still quite strong, but nerfed from their appearance in the Drow trilogy for instance knocking out that spell resistance. They were also less powerful than their 2E incarnation. 3rd edition. 3E managed to make it almost a whole year before caving in and making the Drow a full and proper player character race in the 2001 Forgotten Realms campaign setting. They had the usual elf bony and flaws. Plus, plus 2 int, plus 2 char. Dark vision 120 feet instead of elf normal low light vision. Spell resistance of 11 plus character level, plus 2 to will saves against spells, the ability to cast dancing lights, darkness, and fairy fire as spell like abilities 1 slash day, proficiencies with hand crossbow, 
rapier, and short sword instead of elf normal. Sudden bright sunlight will blind a drow for one round, and the drow will be dazzled until they leave the bright light. Male drow have wizard as their favored class. Female drow have cleric of loth as favored class. The larger array of spell-like abilities they had in Ad and D, such as levitation, are its conned in this edition as being exclusive to drown ability only. That's not to say mechanics to let a PC have access to these powers were completely unavailable. They had an article on their culture in Dragon Magazine number 298 that really emphasized the darker side of drow culture. Want a sample according to this law? Drow don't die out because, despite their tendency to murder and torture each other, they're as fertile as orcs with females normally conceiving twins and triplets. They normally only birth a single baby, though, because the strongest usually kills and absorbs the others in the womb. These prenatal struggles actually produce orgasms more intense than anything a drow female might feel elsewhere. This sensation, Chadzak, is explicitly called out as the main reason why drow women are willing to get pregnant at all. Considering the selfish power hungry bitches they generally are, a baron has a drow subrace called the Umbrogen, who possess strange, mystical powers connecting to the darkness. Mechanically, this is represented by replacing their spell saving throw bonus with a plus 2 racial bonus to hide and move silently checks, swapping their weapon proficiencies for longbow, shortbow, longsword and rapier, and making their favored class into warlock, plus a racial restricted set of variant abilities for salt knife and a bevy of racial feats. All of this appears in Dragon Magazine number 330. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedgear.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smut models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. 4th edition, the 4e monster manual had some explicit monsters as races in the back, and the drow were one of them, although they got an identical repost in the 4e Forgotten Realms player's guide alongside the Genesee. Fittingly, since FR basically created the idea of drow PCS, for drow, plus 2 dex and plus 2 char or plus 2 wis, dark vision, plus 2 intimidate, plus 2 stealth, fey origin, trance, and one racial encounter power, Loth touched, that could be used as a minor action for one of two effects that last until the drow's next turn, a close burst one darkness spell the drow can see through, or a fairy fire spell that gives combat advantage against the target. Drow had a couple of Dragon Magazine articles available to them. Issue number 367 featured the article Children of Darkness, a setting neutral, in that it was equally applicable to both the Nentivale and the Forgotten Realms. Guide to Drow with new racial feats, a racial paragon path, the Cursorborn, and a racial epic destiny, the redeemed Drow. Ironically, it brought back the idea of Drow having greater racial magic without touching upon the old mechanics. A paragon level racial feat called Highborn Drow gave the Drow a third effect to their loth touched racial power. Webs of Darkness creates blinding webbing of solidified shadow that ensnare all enemies in a close blast 3. This was then followed by issue number 413, which abounded in new racial themes for Drow. The Brigand Diad Mercenary, the Elder Boy, the Malay Magthir Champion, the Sorcerer Adept, the House Priestess, the Widow of Erach Tinilith, the Ooze Master, the Secret Apostate, and the Skulker of Heron. 5th edition, Drow are finally an outright core PC racial option in the player's handbook, as an elven subrace. The usual elf advantages, along with plus one char, 120 feet dark vision, automatic knowing some spells, 
the dancing lights can trip at first, the fairy fire 1 slash day at 3rd level, and darkness 1 slash day at 5th level, automatic weapon proficiencies are hand crossbows, rapiers and short swords, they are also the only core race to receive an explicit penalty in the core book, if the drow or the drow's target are in direct sunlight, the drow has disadvantage on attack rolls and perception rolls, it's not as crippling as it sounds in practice, but it is annoying as hell. Better hope you fight indoors a lot, and or play them in an adventure designed around spelunking or limited sun exposure, like out of the abyss or curse of Strahd. Xanatha's guide gave them a boost with a new racial feat. Drow high magic, reflecting the noble drow spell like abilities of Ad and D. This feat grants a drow the ability to cast detect magic at will and both levitate and dispel magic once per long rest without a spell slot. Pathfinder Pathfinder ditches the lolf aspect and instead makes drow line to assorted demon princes instead. They got playable templates for the first time in their best eerie entry and updated versions thereof in the advanced races guide. Pathfinder goes back to really, really freaking old drow lore by stating that there's two kinds of drow, normal drow, and noble drow, who are even tougher and nastier, with a lot more magical powers. These were handled as separate races in the best theory, but they instead changed it to a drow race with a bunch of racial feats to simulate noble drow abilities which is arguably more balanced. Fluff-wise, they are tied into the weird SF bent of the Galarian setting, being the descendants of elves who refused to flee the planet in the face of a catastrophe, and turned to demon worship to survive. First generation drow are actually the result of elves who've broken really bad physically and psychologically transforming into dark elves. Natural born drow aren't actually innately evil, but their culture which engages in the traditional practices of slavery, human sacrifice, etc., with the lovely addition of flesh crafting, is so hideously corrupt that almost all of them end up bad anyway. They aren't matriarchal like classic drow either, just assholes. Their driders are, well, see that page. I should have listened to my cousin Gala. He said to me, Quark, I've got one word for you weapons. No one ever went broke selling weapons Deep Space Nine with Alien Archive 1. The drow are back. While they are still socially divided into normals and nobles, the stat difference is gone. They're still our souls. They are still into slavery and puppy kicking cruelty. But now they've diversified into the wholesome and socially conscious industry of interstellar arms trafficking. Drow society is matriarchal again. Although men can Han Solo their way to riches by smuggling guns, Iberan Drow and Iberan have unique fluff. Like all elves, Drow were formerly slaves to Zendrik's giant empire, but they remained when the now light-skinned elves having split and left their native land of Zendrik for Erinol 38,000 years ago. By culture they are the original and normal elves are the offshoot. Most of them live in the jungle or ruins of giant civilization on Zendrik instead of underground. They speak giant instead of undercommon, and they aren't associated with spiders, with the largest group of drow preferring scorpions instead. There are a handful of known types of drow, with each tribe being of one of these types, but the published material explicitly states more exist beyond the known areas. The Qualsha are nomadic tribes that love scorpions. The Sudatra are giant loyalists who have really ancient magic and are obsessed with fire. The Hantarkal or blood hunters believe they are destined to rule Zendrik and seek to remove the foreigners, who they see as the biggest obstacle to their rule. The Umbrigen avoided the dragon by settling underground and selling their soul to a dark power known as Umbra. The Umbrigen are fighting and losing a battle with a deal kill lord's army and seek weapons to aid in that fight, as they are too prideful to ask for help. While the campaign setting says Sahurjin and Drow are not ideal races for player characters, they actually make more sense than most campaign settings. In Ibaran, most Drow aren't crazy religious cultists and come into conflict with heroes because they are simply territorial people that believe that, as they were servants of the giant empire when it fell. The remains of giant civilization belong to them and all the archaeologists from the north are robbers. Typical NPC drow are still typically evil though. City of Stormreach states that a few drow exiles have found their way to the city, 
and others have chosen to abandon their old ways and settle among humanity. Drow who don't subscribe to their race's ruthless ways come to the city to escape the cruel life of the wilds and that drow often come to the city to trade. This seems to have been a fairly decent number, as the demographics of Stormreach State drow, goblinoids, giants and other monsters combine to make 5% of the 11,650 population. So there are hundreds of drow that aren't actively hostile to humanity. Further Secrets of Zendrick explicitly states that drow tribes beyond the known ones are likely out there past the charted parts of the continent. So there may be non-hostile tribes of drow out there. Exandria like in many other settings. The drow of Exandria delved into the Underdark at the command of the goddess Lolf. Unfortunately for these Dark Elves, though, the Underdark of Exandria is apparently quite a bit more dangerous. The types of civilizations the drow might live in beneath the surface of other settings seem to be constantly beset by aberrations and other monsters to an overwhelming degree. As a result, Loth is actually becoming increasingly unpopular with the drow race, who turn to alternative gods, most prominently as an entity called the Luxon worshipped by the people of the Kryn dynasty of the continent of Wildermount. Because the Luxon reincarnates those who die into newborns within a certain range regardless of the baby's race, it's led to a situation where a goblin could have been a drow noble in a past life or vice versa, though some drow still remain loyal to the spider queen. Things have gotten so dire for Lolth that most of her faithful in Wildermount are goblinoids, with the drow head matron mother and the continent of Wildermount reduced to hiding out in a goblinoid fortress. Half drow you may be curious, given that the drow are still elves, even if they are evil slave taking bastards, can they interbreed with humans too well? Ironically, D&D never really gave that angle much attention, even though Gigax probably would have agreed if you'd pointed it out that half drow would make far more believable PC options than pure blooded drow, being neither as overpowered as old school drow were nor able to advance in the drow's twisted society and thus less likely to drink the Kool-Aid and be evil themselves. So, for the most part, Half drow have been ignored throughout D&D's history. The very first mention of the idea was as half casts. Sick. In D3 for Ad and D1E. Leaving unspoken if these be drow human or, more likely just from the dating pool, drow elf, or even drow bugbear. The half drow are subsequently expanded in that edition's unearthed arcana. They're human. Half elves, but with the drow's sunlight vulnerability tray slapped on top. In short, Whilst exposed to sunlight, you suffer minus 2 dexterity and a minus 2 penalty on your to hit rolls, and your foes get a plus 2 bonus to their saving throws against your attacks. This decreases to a minus 1 to hit penalty and a plus 1 save bonus if you're in shadow but your victim is in direct sunlight. Not exactly the kind of thing to make people interested. The half drow seemed destined to be forgotten, and then came at Greenwood, who amongst his many other inspirations from his belief in the free love movements of the 60s that he slipped into the forgotten realms, found the drought to particularly tickle his fancy. So, after coming up with things like Elastri, naturally, he needed a place to put in half drow. Enter Dambreth, a region in the shining south that he decided to make ruled over by the Sintry, a race of half-drow descended from the ancient drow conquest of Dambreth under the reign of a particularly foolish human king. Well, alright, technically, the Sintry are a melting pot of half-drow and half-elf bloodlines. Since they descend as much from the half-elf clerics of Loviata who helped the drow conquer the place. After all, Loviata is basically the realm's goddess of evil BDSM and femdom. So she's got that in common with Loth. To the point that Loth even lets Loviata's faith be the state religion of Dambreth. But they're still mixed human and drow bloodlines, so it counts. So yes, basically a magical realm of femdom fantasies where any male might be a slave to a drow on the surface and still roleplay. Later editions had the humans rise up and slaughter the domineering knife ear bitches because let's face it. Even to a submissive hornipostor a realistic medieval stasis setting slavery would not be a pleasant one unless he is a beautiful hunk a.k. a reality ensues. Ironically, despite the century, number 2e version of the half drow stat block ever debuted, 
Not even in the Shining South Splat book that introduced Dambreth to the realm's fanbase, but it did mean that Half Drow made it into 3rd edition in a Forgotten Realms Splat book. Races of Farron, to be precise. Of course, like their 1e counterparts, they were not particularly well differentiated mechanically from their half elf roots. A 3e half drow is, officially, a half elf with dark vision 60 feet and replacing elf blood with drow blood, so they're treated as drow for race targeting stuff instead of elf. A baron, likewise, states half drow exist, typically results of trysts in Stormreach, but doesn't actually do anything with them or give them stats. The implication is that half drow exist but are exceptionally rare and with the drow population that interacts peacefully with humans being the mere hundreds their rarity likely is exceptional. Still, a baron works on the idea that player characters are supposed to be exceptional in general, and playing one isn't off limits. A more mechanically invested version of the 3e half drow didn't come to be until towards the end of the edition's lifespan when the 3e version of the splat book Drow of the Underdark. It states half drow have the standard racial traits of half elves given in the player's handbook, except that their favored class is the class in which they have the most levels. In addition, rather than elf blood, they have drow blood. Since drow is a subrace of elf, the net effect is that they have elf blood as well. The specification of drow blood means that for all special abilities and effects particular to a drow, a half drow is considered a drow. Additionally, both properly half drow characters and half elf characters with only a little bit of drow heritage, like the drow equivalent of a tiefling or arsimer, could take the following featuring character creation.